Okay, in this project, we're going to create a fridge magnet from our own original created artwork that we have drawn ourselves. Now, <clears throat> I have right now opened Photoshop. I'm going to go into Photoshop to work with my scanner to call up a new file. So Photoshop is going to come up with this uh, opening uh, document here where we can choose a file type. I'm just going to go ahead and go to print, create a print document and make sure that my print document is set to inches and I'm going to leave it at uh, vertical or portrait mode. So I go ahead and create. Now I'm actually not going to use this document but it is a basis for me to open Photoshop and go ahead and launch my interface to my scanner. To do that I'll come up here to the file menu, come down where it says import now I'll come over here where it says WIA support. This is the process that looks for a scanner attached to your computer by Photoshop. So I'm going to click on this. Now it may be different depending on the computer you have and the scanner you have. But for my machine it comes up and gives me this WIA interface. And I'm going to go ahead and choose a destination folder. So I'll browse to where I keep my artwork. In this case I'm doing a Halloween project. So I'm going to come over here to my documents, I'm going to come down to my tutorials that I'm working on, in this case AutoCAD, and I'm going to look for my project folder called jack o -Lanterns. So I'm going to select that one and select that folder there. And then I'll come over here and hit the start button and it'll ask me what kind of scanner I have. Well I have a Hewlett Packard DeskJet 2540 series, it's an old scanner but it works really good. So I'll hit OK, select that and it's going to go out and establish a connection with my scanner. Now one of the things that I like to do is to preview my artwork before I actually scan it just to make sure that it's loaded in the scanning bed correctly. So I hit preview. So normally what this does is Photoshop goes out and wakes up your scanner and launches a scan preview of what your file looks like. Now as it opens up this file, it's talking to it and it should come back and give us a preview here in a second or so. Okay, it's gone out and found some artwork up here on the screen. And what it does, it puts a box around it with handles on it. Now you can change the size of that box to be whatever you want. I'm going to keep it pretty much about this size right here and I'll go ahead and hit scan now and it's going to scan in the artwork into Photoshop. Now as it's scanning it in it's creating a file and it's going to create it in the directory where we have put our uh, uh, stored directory where we, we called up as we launched the scanner. So now that my file has been scanned I need to open up that file to edit it. So I'll go find that file real quick. I'll go open here and it'll go to the directory where I created this project called jack o -Lanterns. and there's my file it's usually an image.bmp or a bitmap file so I'll open that file up and it brings it up and then I can crop that file to be something a little bit smaller so I'm going to just move these handles around and crop this file to what I want and then I'll hit enter to crop that so there's my artwork now what I would like to do now is to go ahead and darken up this image so I'll come up here to image and adjustments and I'll come down here to what's called curves. Notice it says control M. So I'll click on that. Now it brings up this uh, palette here, this menu where I can change things. And what I'm going to do in this case is just kind of position it here by the jack-o-lantern and the uh, ghost. And I'm going to grab the center of this curve and pull it down. And as you see it darkens up the image. Now I'm going to move this around and see how my cat and my bat came in. That looks pretty good. I'll go with that and I'll hit OK. Now what I'm going to do is do a file export to legacy right here save for web legacy. Like I'm going to put it on my website for example. So I'm going to click on this and actually we're going to put it on a website eventually where it shows the uh, file itself. Now before I get too far down the road here, it says it's a 72K file. That's a pretty small file that I actually could put on the web. So let's go ahead and save that file. Wait a minute, before I do that, let me cancel out of that. 
let's go back up here to image and let's go to image size again this is what I wanted to key on here for the web this says 200 dots per inch or pixels per inch I'm going to change that to 72 which is the base default size of a web uh, is the resolution of a web uh, picture or a photograph or what so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK now it made it really small but if I do a control zero it zooms it back up okay for our purposes this is going to work just fine so I'm going to go ahead and get out of this and now save this file export it out to a web, to a web legacy file now that looks a lot better so I'll just go ahead and hit save and I'm going to put it in my directory where I have all my files so I'll go over here to this PC I'll go to my documents and I have this in my tutorials directory I'll find my jack-o'-lanterns and I'm going to put down Halloween art. I always put a hyphen between my uh, files so that way in the, in the things I name so that way I can put it on the web without any kind of problems. Okay, hit save. And so there's our artwork. Okay, now I'm in AutoCAD, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. Now, I can go up here and hit the uh, button up here, right here by the A, and I'll go out and create another file. Or I can go up here to my tabs and just hit the plus sign, and the plus sign will go out and create for me a new file. All right, there's our new file. Now what we need to do is to get our imported artwork that we've created into this uh, file that we've created here in AutoCAD. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, to get our artwork into our AutoCAD file, most people would normally come up here to the big A up here in the upper left and come down here into import. But if you do that, you're going to be looking at all kind of different file formats. So if I select other file formats as an example, and I go over and it's looking for PDF files, or if I click on this, it's looking for all kinds of different CAD file formats that's not what we want to do so it doesn't really work for us in that regard but that's okay so let's cancel out of that and not do that instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my directory where I have stored my artwork see where it says up here the Halloween artwork I'll right mouse click on that and I'll come over here and I will copy that then I'll go back to my AutoCAD file and then I'll do a control V to paste and it asks me for an insertion point. Well, I can come down here and start in this lower left corner of my Cartesian plane. Then I can come out here, and what it does is it scales the file up proportional to the size of the actual file that we're trying to copy into this. And if you notice, in the upper right of the uh, pointer, there's a, a little picture icon. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and then it's going to ask me a rotation angle. Well, I can move it down here to my polar coordinate or I can just hit zero and hit enter and there it places our file in there now that came up in what's called the def reference here uh, excuse me my go up to my layers here and that came into layer zero all right that's good for now and we'll come back and start using some commands to create our actual artwork all right now what I want to do is I want to create a layer for each of these four objects here so I'm going to come up here to my layer properties panel up here on the ribbon and I'm going to click on it and it's going to open this up now in the body over here where my mouse is located I can do a right mouse click and I can create a new layer and on this first one I'm going to call it ghost I'm going to change the color of my layer to here I'm going to select maybe a cream color kind of signify an old ghost then I'll do a right mouse click and I'm going to create another layer. I'm going to go clockwise here. And I'm going to call this one Bat. Okay. And I'm going to change the color of that layer to, in this case, a light blue. Hit OK. Then my next one is, I'm going to create a new layer called Cat. And I'll change this one to something green, I guess. Hit OK. And then on my last one here, I'm going to create a layer called uh, Jack-O-Lantern. I just call it Jack. 
And of course, I definitely am going to change that layer to the color of a pumpkin, like orange. Hit OK. Now, looks pretty good right here so far. And I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this. And I'm going to make sure that I'm set to, let's go back here first. I'm going to set myself active to the ghost. So I'll set myself active to ghost and I'll exit out of that and I'm going to use my middle mouse button and push it in and pan over so I can see this better and then I'm going to come up and I'm going to use a command called spline alright like I said we're going to use spline so I key in S P L and I think I see a problem before we even get started but let's go ahead and show you what the problem is so I keyed in spline. Notice it says, okay, draw points. So you just come out here and you start drawing points. You got this beautiful looking orange highlight out here and you get a spline. And then you hit the enter command and there's your file. Looks pretty good. Now it's based on the actual color that we set for our ghost layer up here. Now here's the problem. When I take it and move my mouse over the white sheet of paper, you can't see it hardly. And if I come up here and zoom on up to uh, this right here, you can kind of barely see that white mouse cross here there well it's gonna make it hard to draw so what I decided I would do is uh, go ahead and go back to Photoshop here I'll take this image that I've got that's turned to white and I'll come up and I will do a in adjustment here if you come down here you'll see a thing called invert control I and so what that does is is it turns the image that we scanned in to like a blueprint or black and white it looks kind of like it was drawn on a chalkboard but if you see my mouse in Photoshop moving around you can actually see my crosshair so let's go with that I'm going to go ahead and do a file uh, export for legacy right here and I'm going to come over here and hit save and in my directory of jack-o-lanterns I already have this one called Halloween Art 2 I'm going to go ahead and make it Halloween Art, excuse me, Halloween Art 1. I'm going to go ahead and make it Halloween Art 2. Go ahead and do that. It saves our file. Now, back to AutoCAD. Go back here to AutoCAD. And we're going to go back to our, our Layer Properties panel. And we're going to create a new layer. Right mouse click, new layer. And we're going to call this B and E W, black and white, Art. Hit Enter. And I'll change the color of this to uh, something like pink maybe out here, okay? Chartreuse. So we've got that. Okay, now let me zoom out a little bit here. We'll go back to our file folder where we had our uh, jack-o'-lanterns. And we're going to find our black and white artwork. Right now let's click, copy. And we'll go back to AutoCAD here. And we'll go ahead and do a and get rid of our properties panel. Oh, got to make sure we're set to black and white layer. There we go. Get rid of the layer properties panel. And we'll come over here and do a control Z to paste it in. Okay, we'll come up here to this. That's going to ask me for a crazy angle. I'm just going to come down here and key in zero. And there's our black and white. Now, uh, let's zoom up on this and kind of see what our, our cursor looks like now as we go over the ghost image. Okay, I'm going to hit uh, go to my next layer panel here and I'll come down here to ghost. Alright, and I'll set myself active to that by double clicking on that little sheet of paper icon there. Go back here, close that off. Let's key in spline, S-P-L for spline. And let's zoom up on this and start drawing. Yeah, that looks a whole lot better. I can see that just a lot, a lot better now. I'll zoom out here. Now remember, you can always, in the spline command, you can use your center mouse button to uh, zoom out. Click on this. So you can zoom in and out like that using your middle mouse button. You can also push it down and pan. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit more. And I'm going to make this a little simpler here and I'll come back and adjust my splines as I need and then I'll hit enter key so that saves that spline now I'll come back and trim this up as well 
Okay, you see the concept. I'm going to go ahead and finish this guy out and uh, show you what he looks like.